Firstly, Muhammad co-opted a word that he didn't understand. He heard it from the Jews, he repeated it to his followers, but he didn't get what the Jews meant by a Messiah. So when the Bible then mentions stories of, for example, Noah, yeah. or mentions stories, so, the, so, so for example, there's someone who believes in Noah, say, hang on a minute, Jesus was plagiarizing the works of Noah. Muslims often accuse Christians of manipulating our text, and yet I only have to pick up any Quran to see Muslims manipulating their text, okay, that's sticking true. words into the <laughs> translations that are not there in the Arabic. So remember, this is Allah speaking. Okay. And Allah can't utter falsehood, can he? Say that again. Allah can't say anything that's false, can he? Of course not. Right. So Allah says, okay. about the Quran, oh. he says this. Islam teaches that if you try to leave the religion of Islam, you can be killed for it. Very Pretty much all religions have been Okay. Show me in the New Testament where that's taught. Is a fair Does it teach in the Old Testament? Christians don't follow the Old Testament, they follow the New Testament. They never made this Jesus the Jew, never. Jesus is created after his death. Correct. Years and Correct. years and years. And he founded a new covenant. Do you understand, bro, that Christians work by a covenant you system? Believe in it? Mad, yeah. crazy. Right, Telling so you understand we see ourselves as being in a new covenant, right? You don't refer to the Old Testament. Of course we refer to the Old Testament. But we don't follow the Old Testament. You have no truth. The Old Testament is interpreted by the And I'm new. glad you have no power. And because it is interpreted by the new, obviously we refer to the Old Testament. Nobody, but we don't follow no the Old power. Testament. The, the Muslim, they I'm not inviting you to your characterization of Christianity. Can I ask you a question? I'm inviting you to real Christianity. Who's, who's, yeah. who's the author of the Old Testament? There's many authors. But like, but who, where was the where was the book that inspired you? How, how did it come to that? Where did so the Christians Testament? believe that all scripture is God-breed. Oh, so the whole, sorry? all scripture oh, is God-breed. It's God-breed, yeah. So we believe that human beings wrote the books via the inspiration of God. Sure. Because our understanding of inspiration is different from your understanding of inspiration. Our understanding of inspiration is that God elevates human wisdom, human perception, and human ability to capture in history what God wants and what God is doing. So it, it is 100% man-made, and it is 100% inspired by God. That's what we The same with your Bible, 100% man-made. Your Bible, New Testament, 100% man-made. No, 100% Sense man made Bible. Mark and Matthew and Lucas, they were Greeks. They never made Jesus. Let's move away. Go on, you're saying. So you're saying that the testament was sort of inspired by what was man and God, or was it both? Or how did you how do you So I'll try and explain it perfectly. Sure. As best as I can. Sure. Every book of the old and new testament is a hundred percent man made. Okay. But those men had their reason, their ability, their perception elevated by the Holy Spirit to see what God was doing in his life, to see what God allowed us, to see what God wanted. So would you say they had the, to give you an analogy, the sphere of God by the, the, the view of a man? So he's looking for the scope of God, what are trying to say this? Let me use an analogy. I don't know how good it is it may fall down on my hat like another one. people to preach religion. No preach they any saw religion. Go they and saw but God provided them a the telescope or whatever. To see. Yeah. Most kind yeah. of bloody and bloody they were the ones doing the seeing and, yeah. and they were using all their natural abilities to do it. Sick all that happened is God provided a mechanism by which they could see some religion is man made. Okay. I don't know if that's a great analogy. Fabricated. Zero. We have zero evidence. You know where Jesus is. You're just shouting. You're just shouting. Okay, let's, let's, let's move away from this guy. Bye bye. Let's get me. Bye bye. No, no, you talk to me. Come on, bro. Bye bye. Like you. Bye bye. You were saying. Come and talk to me. As I was saying, so. Just to get you capture your understanding was that okay so these men in the, the old testament were sort of looking through the, the scope of god but then in the new testament it's the same exactly the same so it's like exactly the same so now going back to the basic of things who is god in itself so just so i clarify i'm a basic muslim so in terms of let's say you believe jesus to be this you know the son then you got the father and the holy spirit right? yeah so my understanding is then is it was it all three that were given these men the vision or how, how would you explain that when you say god who do you mean by god do you mean jesus so, so we mean so Father so, so this this within the economy of salvation the act of inspiration is the work of the holy spirit 
Right. So yes. So so the Holy Spirit. Break it down for me. I'm I'm just saying. I've never so the Holy Spirit. This idea. If you read the, the the if you read the Old Testament, I may even be able to find a passage, but I don't think it's. Necessary. I've got I've got I've got it. I've so, not read it. Have you got Have you got? A Bible? I've got an old. Yeah, I've got a Bible. The Old okay. Testament, the New Testament. I would encourage you to read it, and if you've got any questions, contact me, and we'll talk. So in terms of in terms of the Christian faith. The, the act of inspiration, and this is what the Church Fathers teach, is the work of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the one who is inspiring each of the writers to capture the truth that God wants them to capture. Can I interject? But they are the ones capturing it. Sure. Can I ask now, how then do you test who really had the Holy Spirit and who didn't? Now imagine, just give an example, that the, 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 for example there's people in the park and there usually is someone who could randomly say, I've got the Holy Spirit, right? Now, how do you know that that guy really has the Holy Spirit and it's not fibbing? And how can that be then construed as something that's uh, you're confident that the writers were not influenced by other means, as opposed to it was not just the Holy Spirit? That's a perfectly that's a valid question. Yeah, of course sure. it is. Course it is. That's, that's my, yeah, that's a that's perfectly question. valid question. So the way that the church did it was this. And, 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 and an example that kicked off this whole thing was a heresy called the Marcionites. So, the, so a guy called Marcion yeah. um, was someone who said, the Holy Spirit has inspired me to write these letters to the church. Sure. And that sparked a question well, within well, the church. Was. Should we believe that these letters are new inspiration to follow? Sure. And what the church did was it, it started to ask the question about how do we know which scriptures are God-breathed and which scriptures aren't. That, that you, I'm sure, I don't know if you know this, but in the first century, you, you, I think you understand that knowledge and education was not book-based. Did you know that? Um, not entirely, but okay. I can understand that. Right, so let me, let, let me clarify. Sure. In the first century, you didn't learn from books because books didn't exist. So you, you learned it from people via exactly. ver verbal? Exactly, it is a, a verbal tradition. From, yeah. So what the church did is, it looked at the writings yeah. that it had been familiar with from the beginning, yeah? and then it said, these writings which of these correspond to the tradition that we have received and have been maintained within the organization of the church? Okay, so the first test was, does it correspond to apostolic teaching? And it doesn't conflict with the idea. It doesn't conflict. So an example would be the Shepherd Hermes. If you go to the, I think it's the, um, the Vaticanus, or the Sinaiticus, right, which is a copy of the Bible from the fourth century. Right. It contains the Shepherd of Hermes. Right. There were some Christians that read the Shepherd of the Hermes and understood it to be scripture. Right. But the church came to the conclusion that whilst there's nothing wrong with reading the Shepherd of Hermes, it doesn't teach anything bad. It's a really popular book actually in the early church. It wasn't apostolic. Why? Because it doesn't. It, it wasn't known to the church earlier enough. So the earliest church fathers don't quote from the Shepherd of Hermes. So the second test is one, does it correspond to what the, we know the apostles taught because this is what we teach in the church? Yeah. And the second one was, is it early? Like what are our earliest texts? Sure. Now, if people like Ignatius and Irenaeus who are early, like 150 AD, so very early church fathers are quoting from all four gospels and I think all 13 letters of Paul, the only books that they don't quote from are 3 John, 2 Peter, second, the 2nd second Epistle of John, the 3rd Epistle of John, the 2nd Epistle of Peter, Revelations and Hebrews. Those are the only five books that we can't find witness for from the very earliest Christians. Okay? But there's a reason to understand we don't find that witness. Because the church was copying down texts, but the Romans were trying to destroy texts. And so chains of transmission were interrupted by Roman persecution. It wasn't like in Islam where we got to dominate from the beginning. That didn't ever happen for us Christians. We had to go through 300 years of constant persecution. And lots of that persecution was about hand over your documents or we kill you. All right? So transmissions were interrupted and that's why the transmission of those five books was interrupted. Okay, but the transmissions were sufficient within the early church for them to recognize the scripture. I've got another question. So early Sorry. and apostolic. Okay, I, I kind of got it just there. Yeah. What I was going to say to you was this then, and this is a bit of a slightly different topic, uh, but something that I've heard, and I want to give a bit of clarification. Uh, earlier church fathers and the earlier Christians, they had a, a, a meeting. Yeah. Um, Constantine, I believe. Constantine, yeah. yeah. Regarding talking the, about the Council of Nicaea, yeah, three hundred and twenty-five. Yeah, yeah. So you obviously know anything. Of course, so I it, it was, you have to know in this place. But was that in my, in what I've understood so far, was that a topic discussing 
the status of Jesus within the theology of Christianity, whether he was a son or not. Is that, is that one of the debates that was... So, so I, I'm happy to explain exactly what yeah, that debate that, Yeah, okay. I'm not debating it, I just want to know. Sure, sure, sure. No, yeah. no, no. I, I, I really appreciate people who ask honest questions. Yeah, that's, that's what Your, your questions seem honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine, that's fine. So there was a debate within the early church that started because of a presbyter called Arius. Right. Pres the presbyter Arius in the, in the Sea of Alexandria in the uh, third century started to teach the following that Jesus Christ was not eternal, that he wasn't God, but that he was the first creation of God. So it wasn't the case he had, uh, he was in that God status, but he was rather the first creation. He was rather the first creation. That's okay. what Arius started to teach. Okay. His bishop, i.e., his boss, Where he Bishop, bishop Anthony yeah. in Alexandria, excommunicated him from the church. Because of that. Because of that. Because that was not orthodoxy. Because Anthony said, Anthony said the church has always taught that Jesus is eternally God, that he is God. Okay? Point, yeah. let, let me, let me, let me sure. just clarify. I want sure. to explain this meeting to you. Sure. All you're going to come away with is knowledge. Sure. That's not a bad thing, is it? No, no. Okay. You learn it's good. Right. So, Arius argued that the relationship between Jesus the Son and the Father, bearing in mind he is saying Son and he is saying Father, is one of homo, homoiousis, which means like nature, similar nature, right? Anthony said, you got it wrong. The relationship is homoousius, the same nature. That's where we get homosexuality from, of the same. Homo, as opposed to homai, which is of similar nature. Sure. Right, so this Arius, to his credit, was a brilliant public speaker. You know, he's a, he was a great demagogue. He was very convincing. Lots of people were convinced by him. And so this started to create division in the church. And then a bishop from Spain said to the emperor, we've got to get this sorted, along with some other issues that we need to deal with, call a council. So Constantine calls a council. The council comes together. And within a month of debate, within a month of discussion, all the council agrees that Arius is a heretic. Now, bearing in mind, this is before modern communication. There were no emails, there were no letters. Bishops were coming from all over the world. And the way that they came to the conclusion was in three ways. Firstly, logically. Logically, God can't change. So if God is the Father, that means he's eternally the Father. But obviously, creation doesn't always exist. So who is he eternally the Father to? He's got to have a son. So therefore, the son is also eternal. So there's a logical argument. Secondly, what does the Bible teach? The Bible's really clear. Jesus is God, but Jesus is the son of the Father. So therefore, there's a biblical testament. And finally, the final argument was simply, this is what we do in my church. Literally, it's that argument. It's kind of like, this is what my bishop taught me, this is what his bishop taught him, this is what his bishop taught him. And within one month of discussion, it was agreed, Arius was a heretic, and anyone who agreed with him was a heretic. Good next question I'll say then. Is there, so today, there's different factions within the Christian faith that believe Jesus not to be the son? So are there still groups that believe in that form but still call themselves Christian but say we believe Jesus not to be the son but we believe in the Bible etc XYZ are there still Christians yeah. of that faction so, so that's what I've heard of them so, so to be clear yeah if you do not believe in the Trinity sure if you sorry. don't believe sorry I'm Mrs. Sure. I'm probably <laughs> working a session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. Pro -like, man. Like, what are you please? doing? Okay, I'll look at the So, so my point to you is, bro, my point to you is this. I'm not going to tell about the channel, she's going to see me, you know, in the corner. Right. So, my point to you is this. Just like if a Muslim denied that Muhammad is the prophet of Allah, or said that there was another prophet after Allah. So, you could argue that's a group, uh, the Qadianis. Qadianis, basically, there's a group within, uh, I don't know if you heard of them, uh, they basically started off uh, in the. Um, 18th century, right. uh, where they, uh, sorry, the 19th century, where they believed that uh, there was another prophet after prophet. Right, and would you agree uh, that? And obviously, then that took them out of the fold. Of and would you, would you agree? So right, exactly. basically, you're using that example to say if anyone doesn't believe in the Trinity, they're not Christian. Therefore, they're not Christian. Exactly. Well, obviously, them Christians will obviously no, no, we still are. Right, but, but so makes them Muslims. Sure. Then Muslims yeah. would say they're Muslims. So, so my question then was, what yeah. makes them believe? They must have. Or someone's obviously told them yeah. they've, they've got this belief from somewhere. Yeah. So my question is, okay. how did they come about that conclusion? Do you know anything about it? Yeah, yeah of course, of course. It, it, it essentially begins by rejecting. Essentially, like you look at the Unitarians. The Unitarians emerged in the 1700s. Yeah. Right. They deny the Trinity, right. and the reason why they deny the Trinity is because they deny the authority of Scripture. They say that reason is more important than Scripture. So if, if our rationality can't comprehend it, so it's another it way of ignoring laws. Yeah. Um, the if you God. go to any Unitarian, they don't give a monkey's what the Bible says. 
What they care about is what is the humanitarian ethic? What does the Enlightenment say? What does our philosophy say? What does reason say? So, so they're saying that truth is judged by their capacity to reason. Now, which is obviously like, uh, it's a load of rubbish. Yeah, completely. And, and we, as Christians, don't believe that. We believe in the authority of Scripture, the authority of the councils, the authority of the church. We believe in the authority of the martyrs. It's all. So do you all listen? To, uh, no, I'm a Muslim, right? So just to break it down, obviously I've listened to you. our belief of Jesus was that we believe him to be a great Messiah, yeah. a prophet of God. Yeah. Uh, just like um, when Adam was made in the Quran, he gave an example that, uh, like we created uh, Jesus, that uh, similar to Jesus, uh, Adam was Jesus, that he had no father. No mother, uh, but Godship wasn't given to Adam the yeah. way the Christians. Yeah. Uh, so we believe then obviously Adam and Eve, and Eve had no parents either. Uh, she was made from the rib of uh, Adam, yeah. is what we believe. Yeah. Um, and, and we believe that Jesus was in the chapter Mary in the Quran basically says that uh, we believe him to be uh, a miracle from God that he basically said, I couldn't be, and it is. Yep. And Mary said, How can I have a child when no man has such been? Gabriel said to her, yeah. You know, for God it's. Uh, it's you know uh, he, for him is uh, yeah. so essentially our theology is that God sent all the apostles and they all had one message and that basic message was basically to worship one God and follow the message of the time. Yeah, yeah, I.e. Yeah. we believe in if, we was, if I was in the time of Moses, I would listen to him. If I was in the time of Jesus, yeah. I would listen to him. If I was in the time of Abraham, so therefore we believe uh, the prophets at the time. Yeah. So, so so let me explain why I reject that. Before you reject it, let me, uh, well, I do reject let it. Let me conclude. But let me explain. <laughs> go on, go on, go on. Alan, you can. So, in the central, basically, just breaking it down, my man. All we're saying is that that's our principle of believing in the prophets was that we all believe them to be brethren to one another, and that there's the only disparity is we sort of created that over centuries. But if we look at the core of their message, yep. they're all in line with each other. Okay. So when the Prophet let, Muhammad, sorry, me... la last line, and I say, okay. So Prophet Muhammad, peace and be upon him, when he came down to concur what the other prophets were saying. He didn't really add or change anything, he just concluded the whole message. And in a nutshell, okay. anything he said came to pass. So let me, let me explain why I reject that. Because Muslims say, and it's intrinsic to their belief, that Jesus is the Messiah. Yeah. Now you know what Messiah means, don't you? Uh, break it down. I don't know the full definition. I'm not going to act like I do. Okay. But Messiah, we, we say, is a, is a great title, but go ahead. Right. A Messiah is one who is anointed. Yeah. That's essentially what it means. A chosen person. A chosen person. Hold on. But within Judaism, if you read the Old Testament, yeah. right? The, the messianic figure is not some mere man. If you read the New Testament carefully about what it says about the Messiah, the Messiah is a cosmological figure that has equality with God himself. And I can show you that from the Old Testament if you want me to. Okay? No, no, I take your right. word for it. So my point to you is, when you say that Jesus is the Messiah, Right? You've got to understand what Messiah you've got to understand what Messiah means and who the Messiah is. The Old Testament is not just talking about some prophet. I mean he is a prophet, don't get me wrong. But he is so much more Can than I a prophet. Just, just he is a cosmological yeah. figure sure. that literally has God's authority on earth. And he's equal to God in every way. Sure. So obviously our then in that case the Islamic theology with that word and the definition of it is definitely different to the way you say because obviously we see Messiah to be the appointed one, the one who fights the Antichrist, but not to be the one who's gone like Peter. So what we say is obviously God is above uh, his creation and we believe that he's not like, but I'll give an analogy. And this is not to be crude to the Christians or rude to the Christians, but I think it's an analogy that sort of makes sense for me. So, long as, you're, so long as you're willing to me for turn that analogy back on you. Yeah, you can do. Sure. Uh, but our, our saying is this, that God sends instructions to mankind. Yep. And when he sends instructions to mankind, we believe that God doesn't need to be uh, for example, if I was to create a, a VCR or a DVD player, Blu-ray, whatever it is, I wouldn't need to become that thing to therefore give an example of that thing. I would give an instruction manual for yep. that thing. So our, our belief is therefore that God sends messages, but nothing has to be from God or equivalent to God for that message to be delivered. We believe that man, so for example, for mankind, he'll send man amongst them. That's, that's, that's so so, so the believe. point is, here, here, here's a couple of problems. Firstly, Muhammad co-opted a word that he didn't understand. He co-opted the word Messiah, but he didn't understand the word Messiah because he applied it to Jesus with no understanding of what that word means. He heard it from the Jews, he repeated it to his followers, but he didn't get what the Jews meant by a Messiah. Wait a second. Yeah, sure. The, the Jews are waiting for this incredible person, this human being, because we do believe Jesus was fully human, who is a cosmological figure that will reorder the world according to Yahweh's commands. That is not what Muhammad or the Quran portrays as Jesus. 
sure. When you said he went, the Jews gave him that information, we believe in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, he says, he talks about uh, Messiah, it's, it's mentioned in there. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he didn't go to the Jews for information. We believe he got direct inspiration from God via Gabriel yeah. to tell him about the status of Jesus and the status of the prophets and to clarify their statuses. Obviously, there was misconceptions with David. Yeah. Uh, there was misconceptions with Solomon. Yeah. One of the misconceptions of Solomon was that he dealt with magic, but we believe no, uh, he didn't deal with magic. He basically uh, okay, took away magic yeah. and, and yeah. He, he... Clarifying the misconception. Basically clarifying the misconception. So therefore, we don't think Muhammad got the, uh, got the message incorrect or where he got the message from. We believe he was uh, guided by Allah in regards to what the position of Jesus was. Are you aware? I'm sure. Are you aware that there are stories in the Quran that we can find in books that are dated earlier than the Quran? No, no. So, of course there is, because we believe that the gods, before you go further, we obviously believe as Muslims that God sent scriptures before. Right. We Hold believe God is the author. So Hold there's going to be stories prior. Hold on. Yeah, but here's, so here's here's why God says in the Quran, before you go further, yeah. just clarify, that's why God says in the Quran that remember yep. or regarding the previous stories that we've yep. mentioned. Yep. The stories, so if God uses the term mentioned, so that means it's previously mentioned. Before. Right, but, but my point to you sure. is, as someone who doesn't believe in Muhammad, right, you've got to understand that when I, when I can see a story that Muhammad would have had access to because he encountered the Jews and the Christians and that there are stories that we find in the Quran that the Jews and the Christians were circulating amongst themselves to me, someone who doesn't believe in Muhammad, it's clear plagiarism Okay, can I ask you a question? I'm glad you brought that up Now imagine, yeah, if in history you have someone documenting something, right, yeah. at that time yeah. Years later, someone else documents on that same incident, does that become plagiarism or is he just merely repeating what was said before? If he passes it... Am I right in saying that? He, no, no, but think about that. For example, it's yeah, plagiarism. Got, it's plagiarism. So plagiarism. Give me a definition he of plagiarism. Passed, yeah, it's if you pass something off as your work when it's actually someone else's. But Rasul never said, oh, this is a work of mine, it's a work of God. So if God mentioned, for example, the story of Moses. Hold on. Go on then, let me see what you got. Hold on. <laughs> Where did that book from? <laughs> Who is the author? Bob, I'm not just... Don't lie to me. What's the scripture that you were going to mention to this man about Jesus being greater in the Old Testament? Yeah, it's in the, it's in the book of David. Yep. I think it's in chapter 7. It describes one like unto the Son of Man, who is taken up before the throne of Yahweh, and he shall have reign and authority over all the world, and his reign and kingdom shall last forever. So you have an eternal king who is ruling the world, and who can do that except God? Who can do that except God? But that's what the Jews but believe I, about them. I have a massive problem with God dying. That's my issue. But anyway, let's go to the next point. Okay, you, you understand? So, so let's let's just uh, let's just let me bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Can I just call my missus? Yeah, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> She's, gonna get, She's gonna get pissed. So, so you don't know nothing. Why are you in what, there? What's your name, bro? Uh, Mosin. Where are you from, Mosin? Um, from East London. Okay, fair enough. But um, give me one second. Yes, of course. I'm going to struggle to find it. It's not a, a pass. No, no, take time, man. Don't worry. I mean, I'm not. I'm sure. Not, not in a rush. Sure. Let me just see. Let me just see. Okay, that's uh, it. You're getting told off, you. <laughs> you're getting told Hello. off. So what did you say it was again? Um, it, no, oh. Not that long. Should be, I should be there soon. Should I take it? Okay. Google Surah 8119. So it sounds oh, wait, I haven't got much time yet. Yeah. Sure. Surah 8119. Yeah. Surah 8119. Can I get that as well? Yeah, of course. 8119. I think I. Wait, wait, hang on. Is that talking? Uh, I don't know what the. Uh, the I think I. Give me one second, I'll get that. Right? So remember, this is Allah speaking. Okay. And Allah can't utter falsehood, can he? Allah can't, Allah can't utter falsehood, can he? Say that again. Allah can't say anything that's false, can he? Of course not. Right. So Allah says okay. about the Quran, right. it says this. Verily, this is the word of a most honorable messenger. What are you? You're not going to the beginning, from are you? From Allah to, to Prophet. No, oh, that's in quote. It's in brackets. No, not no, even no. Which, which verse are you going from? 19. 19. Okay, let me get there. Yeah. So we're on the same page. Sure. So that indeed, the, yeah, go ahead. Verily, this is the word, a most, this is the word, a most honorable messenger. Conveyed by a noble messenger. 
conveyed. It doesn't say conveyed in See, here. See, this is the thing. Before you go further, Hold on. it doesn't say conveyed. Uh, in I know, I know. Let me just get, let me explain myself. It says here conveyed. It doesn't. The problem yeah. here is I'm not there. I tell you why. You're asking problem, me to trust your translation over this translation. I'm not, I'm not going to go to that. I'm going to just go briefly about the language. Yeah. When it comes to Arabic, one thing we just have to clear from the beginning. Sure. Sometimes each one of the Arabic language, it takes five to six English words to describe that meaning. Sometimes you don't get... So for example, with certain translations, there were scholars who came up with those translations. However, uh, other scholars would say, well, actually, they would have used a different word to describe that. Yep. So henceforth, the English translation will never be as, let's just say, uh, consistent compared to, for example, reading it from Arabic direct. So for example, that's why we look at what the uh, tafsir, which means basically the scholars who understood the Arabic language, who then explain what the verses meant. So therefore, just right now, you just said what you said. And I said, well, actually, no, on the contrary, it's a, it was conveyed by the numbers. May I reply? But, go ahead. Do you understand you're, what I mean by I get the what you're saying. of the Arabic language? I, 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 get, I get what the you're saying. Of the language, I get yeah. what you're saying, but you're essentially saying to me that I shouldn't trust two Arabic linguists who studied at Medina I University. Say, not to say the word trust, I? I should trust yeah. your translation. Not really, no. What, what is I'm what you're saying? saying? No, no, what I'm the, saying so, is... The Quran is saying, God, according to this be, translation... Do you want to finish it and I can, then yeah. carry on? Verily, this is the word a most honourable messenger. So it's saying that these are the words of Muhammad. Okay, go to the next a verse A most honourable messenger. Go to the next verse. Owner of power you. with the Lord of the throne. Who is possessed by the owner of the power of the possessed throne. It doesn't say that here, it just says owner of power yeah, right. with the Lord of the throne. It's with Allah. Yeah. No, no, that's in brackets. Okay, it's not in enough. the Arabic. Okay, fair enough. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't believe in. I, I, I. This is what I don't like about Islamic translations. Is they Muslims often accuse Christians of manipulating our text, and yet I only have to pick up any Quran to see Muslims manipulating their text. Okay, that's Sticking true. words into the <laughs> translations that are not there in the Arabic. Ah. That's what okay. we see all the time okay before you go so you're gonna doesn't say with allah do you wanna, do it says with the lord of the throne okay do you wanna, so what does that mean by the, with the lord of the throne i would accept that that is allah okay fair enough. there you go but it but doesn't <laughs> say with allah that's what okay. i'm saying it doesn't say okay. with allah finish what you've got to read and yeah. then we'll get was that what you so, that so my point verses? to you is my point to you is in the quran it states that the Mus that the, the critics of muhammad said you are simply saying fables that we've heard before that was one of the accusations made by the people that heard Muhammad. It's like, we've heard these stories. This isn't anything new. And yet, Muhammad is repeating these stories as if they're from Allah. That's plagiarism. Okay, so again, going back to my original point was, play, just merely repeating a story centuries later Agreed. Uh, doesn't mean one has plagiarism. Hey, how's it going, man? You right, yeah? Like the, now that guy knows Arabic, but anyway, so um, I'm not gonna get but anyway, so point being was that when it comes to um, someone, for example, if in a hundred years time, down the line, someone decides to write about uh, that guy's top Manchester United, right? People who wrote about that at the time, right now, and someone to write something similar in a hundred years time, we're not going to call it plagiarism. It's just reminding of what happened at that time of history. Right. So therefore, let's, what we're saying is let's let's use let's use a proper example. Well, Say then. this brother writes about Manchester United. But it's a good team, all right? Okay, fair enough. I, 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 I don't mind girls' sports. I just wish girls would play them. I'm a rugby man myself. Okay. So, so my Ooh. point is... That was your opinion. That was a bit hard. Mm. And, and by the way, fight, so. what's wrong with so, it being a girls' sport? So, so, you there's about? nothing Are wrong with it being a girls' sport. I've just said I fully support girls' sports. I just wish girls would play them. They so my play point them. to you is... My point to you is... My point to you is... If this brother writes about Manchester United... Yeah. And then I write about Manchester United a hundred years later, but I say... I got this from Allah, when really I got it from him, then I have told a lie. Right. Okay, but that's and true. this is what we find in the Quran. There are stories that we can clearly see are coming from somewhere else. They're literally word for word the same, so like the story of so Solomon let me ask you a question and Bathsheba. Then. So when the Bible then mentions stories of, for example, Noah, yeah. or mentions stories, so, then, so, so for example, there's someone who believes in Noah say, hang on a minute, Jesus was plagiarizing the works of Noah. So, and that's, that, but that's not, but let me just finish my point. Yeah, go on. So if you're going to use that criteria, say that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got his information and he plagiarized it from the Christians and the Jews, then one can argue, well, if the stories in the Bible in the time of Abraham or in the time of uh, Solomon and other prophets prior to that, and the people who believe in them and not in Jesus will say, hang on a minute, no, they copied or plagiarized from our works, which is not the case. We don't believe that. We believe every now, we believe in history, God sent books 
a long time and every time he sent a book he would send another book to centuries later because of the old ones we believe right, let me finish with, oh, i'll, yeah, I'll sure, summarize sure because we believe the islamic theology is that they were corrupted for various reasons and we believe the quran to be the final book and because of that uh, we follow the message of what the quran says and because it's the final book we believe it's not going to have any flaws Therefore, we don't say that when, G when but the Bible or the Torah or the other books that God sent to Abraham and to Moses, we don't say that they were plagiarized when they talk about Adam and Eve or Noah. We just merely talk about how they were stories that were reminded by God. Can I reply? So when, when, when you read the Gospels carefully, they consistently say things like this. As it was spoken by the prophets, as it was spoken by the prophets. I can show you verse and verse again. As it was spoken by the prophets, as it was spoken by the prophets. Jesus said himself, as it is in the law of Moses, Amen. as it was spoken by the prophets. Amen. That's what Jesus and the, the, the writers of the New Testament do. <laughs> what you're saying, what we're really talking about, is the, the clear evidence that Muhammad has taken a story that belongs to this group of people and ascribed it to Allah when he's taken it from somewhere else. Well, and it is literally almost word for word identical. The, 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 the story of uh, Solomon Bathsheba in the Quran. You know that yeah, story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, that was a Jewish fable for children. We know where it came from. We know when it was written. It's in, uh, it's in the Targum, uh, a Babylonian Targum. So it's a Jewish midrash that was used to teach children moral lessons. To be honest, that still doesn't really answer the question because what you're saying is you're basically being quite um, subjective here in the sense that you're saying, well, because Jesus used the terminology of the Prophet said and the Prophet said, etc., you're therefore then dismissing the idea that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam could therefore not get inspired by God and come up with the same stories that co-existed before. So when the Jews came to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they asked him a question, they said, what can you tell us about Dhulqa Nain in Surah Kaf, right? And they asked about a man. So he goes, come back to me. So when obviously he got inspired, we believe, he came back, he narrated them the story that sort of, um, put this way, matched what they believed in, right? Maybe slight variation according to their books, but the long story short, just because a prophet comes with stories many centuries later, right? Before we even describe whether he plagiarized or not, what we need to really establish, and this is, I'm gonna sit my life final book, then I got back to my family, because I never came, I'll come see you next week if you're here. Sure, sure, sure. Just to summarize what I was gonna say was, before we discuss whether who's coming with what is correct or not, what we really need to establish is whether the man who's saying it is a prophet or not. Once you come to that conclusion, then anything after that would make sense, right? So before, because obviously I'm going to say, oh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said this, Jesus said that, then you're going to be like, well, I don't believe you because I don't believe in the guy who's saying it. Exactly. Therefore, really to test the thesis of someone is really to test the credibility of the man. And if the man, whatever he said in his entire life was consistent and was not inconsistent, then obviously one will have to look at his, what would it be, what evidence does one have to suggest that this man I can show is telling you a lie. But before you do that, time, yeah. I haven't got time, yeah, because you've heard the rings, yeah. I've got three rings in it. Four rings. See, bro, my man's very a quickly, very quickly. Gone in. <laughs> my but final next point. week, if you're here, I'll yeah, come absolutely. down. Absolutely. And what I would suggest to you is you pick up that Bible that's collecting dust at home. It actually is. I've got it from a. I've got it from an American preacher. Great. A very nice man. He lives in India. Really. But he's a white man who lives in India. Knows my language. Yeah. The so, second language. so read it. <laughs> yeah. Read it and come back to me with questions, and we'll talk. The thing is, it's a big book, so it'll take me some time. Start in the New Testament. Anywhere in the New Testament. So let me, let me, let me just finish my point one very quick point the reason why we know it's plagiarism is because the story that I'm talking about can't be found earlier than a certain date now I can't remember exactly what that date is so I'm just gonna pluck a date out of my head and I can be corrected later. I've got one at home thank you listening like, it, so let's just let's just say it was found in the fifth century if there is no history of that story for the centuries that come before it, going back to Jesus or going before anyone else, then we are reasonable and right to suggest that that story was made in the fifth century. And if that story then appears in the Quran, we have reason to believe that Muhammad plagiarized a story from the fifth century that has nothing to do with any prophetic but tradition that at all. Conflict what you started this conversation with when you said to me, I thought prior you to the first and nah, but you just said something. Got, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I to refute you want to you want to have the last word? No, 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 I'll let no, you no, have no, the last no, word. No, no, I'll let you have no, the last word. There's one thing I saw with that. This the, is the last word. The one problem I saw with that is when in the beginning of the conversation you said to me, prior to the first century, that there was time when knowledge was not passed by books. That was verbal information. Yep. So just because one cannot find the scripture prior to that doesn't mean it never happened. You know what the problem is? Go ahead. <laughs> hey, that he wants to ask me. You know, what is that? Yeah, you're, right, you're right, you're right. So you know what the problem <laughs> is? Go on. It was the Christians that invented the book. 
We literally, we are the ones that invented the idea of sticking leaves of material together in a bind with a, with a, with a spine. That was a Christian invention. We did that. So by the seventh century, education was increasingly more by books. Okay, on that bombshell. On that bombshell. <laughs> you have uh, listen, what was I going to say? What, are you here next week? Yeah, yeah. Re read your Bible, come back with some questions. What's, what's the name? Bob. Bob. Okay. It's not my real name, but it's the one I'll go by here. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, right. What's your name again? Mohsin, man. Mohsin, nice, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to you meet you. Next week, I'll Really nice. Thank you, bro. Yeah, you no, take no, care. Good God bless, bro. Okay. Stock of him. Stock of him. F O C O P. Are you going to post this later? Yeah, yeah, I'll probably post it later on. Okay, so